All right, are we ready to go? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay, okay thank you. Thank you very much. So I just want to uh, give you a short and I hope entertaining lecture of uh, the clay footed colossus, you know, this, this big man who looks very strong but was very fragile feet. And this is the old pound. Uh, next slide, Yanti. Yeah, if we talk about climate change, I don't think the old pound is the best candidate um, for many reasons. I will, I will not have time to go into details, but you know, this uh, interaction between uh, uh, climate change and agriculture is, is a very long story. And uh, uh, there's a, a intertwined effect of the, the impact of agriculture to climate change and the impact of climate change to agriculture. So um, we have to consider uh, our palm cultivation through this mirror and to see if the practices on the ground are really uh, connected with the what is requested by the, the national commitment, the international agreements, not only the Paris Agreement, but also, uh, also the, the, um, the Amsterdam Declaration on Forest. And there are a lot of, uh, of uh, international um, frameworks which are shaping now our research, and especially uh, a lot of alerts on the impact of our practices on climate change. Next slide, please. Yeah, so if you look at the, the vulnerability index, you can superpose uh, most of the producing countries uh, as shown by um, Jean-Marc a few slides ago. If you look at Southeast Asia, uh, the two sites of Malacca Straits where almost 90% of the oil palm is cultivated, is a very narrow area. And as you can see the color, it's uh, between uh, uh, dark blue and uh, and uh, and pale blue, so it's it's a very prone to climate change. So, if you have uh, more than ninety percent of a single crop, when a single species, which is concentrated in a, such a narrow area of the world, and which is very prone to um, uh, catastrophes and manifestations of the climate change, uh, you have to scratch your head is your crop ready for the challenge of climate change or what we have to do now and what we have to, uh, to do to uh, make some inflections on the, the public policies because we all know that public policies are like the Titanic ship, it takes a long time to change capes and this cape is, is, is gonna be uh, urgent and it's gonna be long to, to face but um, if you look at the, at the data um, and the figures, uh, there's some emergency on, on doing something uh, on the resilience of the oil palm to climate change. Next slide, Yanti, please. So how to, how to work on that? Um, the basic of climate smart agriculture has been, have been discussed for a long time. Um, it's based on, the, on this triangle of product, increasing productivity, lowering the uh, greenhouse uh, green, greenhouse gases emissions and adapting and building the resilience to climate change. And uh, that's, that's something which is very clear for us as agronomists and especially all palm agronomists. And this is where we have to work uh, every day and not only work every day as, as uh, scientists, but also prepare those changes and train our young colleagues and professionals to uh, this new way of uh, uh, interacting with the with the, the, the landscape and and considering our, our, the plantation as a as an ecosystem. Um, for all palm, it's 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 big change which is needed. We we just celebrated and remember that one century of uh, all palm cultivation in Malaysia uh, a few years ago, and what has changed during this century in terms of uh, socioeconomics, in terms of uh, uh, changes in the in the plantation structure integration of the plantation into the landscape. And, you know, the conclusion is, is very dark because uh, it looks like the so far so good policies has, has been uh, the, the, the motto for many years. Um, so it's not, it's really time for a change. Next slide, Yanti, please. 
So there's a few things which are already been done in the oil palm sector. Uh, just choosing two of the major topics, agroforestry, recycling of organic, organic waste, a lot of plantations and small orders cooperatives are doing that. Uh, agroforestry, agroforestry is really at the, at the early beginning. Uh, the, 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 the number of projects of uh, including agroforestry and managing agroforestry project on an on pile base, uh, you can call them on the on the, the fingers of one single hand. There are, there are probably two or three in the world at the moment. And it's clearly not enough because the next El Nino is going to come in a couple of years now uh, and we're not ready. We have no data, we have no uh, places where we can make data capture on real time on, on the manifestations of the, the, the El Nino and the consequences on the, the oil palm productivity and the productivity of the forests around and the, and the reaction and the, the, the role of those surrounding uh, wild species around this plantation. There's a lot, lot, lot of things to do. And uh, other topics are also preservation of soils and uh, of course supporting innovation. There are quite general topics, but a lot of them are, are applicable to the old palm cultivation. Next slide, please. So my, my question today is, uh, is old palm a champion or a clay-footed colossus? Of course, it's, it's a kind of um, uh, a joke, but it's not really a joke because it's kind of a question I'm asking myself for, for a long time. We can benefit from all your all yields and it's our, our breeders are very good. So we've got trials with uh, uh, average production of nine to 10 or 12 tons of oil per hectare, some places in Panama and Costa Rica with sufficient rainfall. So we have very good high yields, better than any other oil crop. And Jean-Marc was uh, very keen in, in, uh, in showing that. We have a wide agronomic plasticity. You can grow oil palm almost everywhere under the tropics with good yields. You can also have a very nice uh, social plasticity. The oil palm can, can be grown as an estate crop, can be grown as, as a small orders crop, can be grown as an as outgrower crop. Uh, the, the, the social structure of the, the production it has many, many different faces. If you look at Africa with a, a mix of uh, uh, village oil extraction uh, and, uh, and agroindustry and extraction, uh, there's a lot of plasticity in this, in this plant and maybe we don't have used it um, at full speed. So yes, it's a champion, but at the same time, if you look at what happened in, in during El Nino and the, the 2019 dry episodes, uh, you can see that the resilience is very poor. You can see the impact of the climate on, on the global palm oil, uh, which means that, you know, you, we all know that 90% of the oil palm is gone in Malaysia and Indonesia. So if something wrong happens to, to those countries, you can see the impact directly on the, on the, um, on the oil production. So, it's a, it's a very clear sign of the poor climatic resilience of our production system as they are, they are they have been designed one century ago by the colonial power, power so we're back to, to some colonial uh, vision, uh, but they have not changed a lot. So are we ready to face another climatic crisis? I'm not very sure about that. Next slide, please. So this is uh, the Rhodes Colossus, a very strong guy who was uh, uh, the guardian of the, the port of Delphi's. But if you look at details, maybe he is clay footed. Um, we are taking a lot of risk while cultivating this one single species on huge areas, which are concentrated around the, the two banks of the our bit of Malacca Straits. Um, it's very concentrated and it is very dangerous. Remember the the potato crisis in Ireland at the beginning of the century, which was the, the key of the migration of Irish people to the US or to Australia. Um, and uh, we still have the same kind of development. We have concentrated um, production of one single uh, product, so one single commodity, one, one single species in a very narrow area. So it is not very wise in terms of climatic re resilience. And we know that the oil palm is, is not a very bad, a very good guy in terms of uh, climatic responses. 
It doesn't like water stress. Uh, if you apply water stress to the oil pan, the sex ratio will, will uh, drop. So we're going to have a lot of male flowering, which will compromise the um, oil production for at least two or three years. Um, the fruit development is hampered by drought. Um, and uh, the photosynthetic activity is, is also uh, hampered. So um, we got a species there which is uh, uh, very sensitive to climate change. And uh, I know that it's easy to stay. It's not easy to undertake because uh, uh, driving breeding and driving changes in, uh, in uh, practices in your farm is a very long story, but we have to begin now. So, and for beginning, we have to stop sleeping on our laurel and being very proud of our, our plan, which is of course true, but we also have to, to scratch our heads and to discuss with the other people from other uh, oil crop commodities um, to see what can be done to uh, activate this resilience. And first thing to do is to document because we don't have any serious documentation of what happened in 2015 during the first El Nino <coughs> and we're not ready for the next one. Next slide, Yancy, please. Uh, thank you. A uh, very short uh, presentation of our project. We all know CIRAD because uh, Jean-Marc is a good ambassador of CIRAD and, and uh, Marcel also got two very good senior researchers in, in UPM, so we know what, you, what we're doing in the region. Next slide. And one of the things we're doing is, is, is bidding those uh, uh, platforms of research and development. And one of the, uh, uh, can you go back, uh, Yanti, please? Yep. Uh, the salsa platform is uh, is one of those platforms who are still uh, fine tuning the, the the legal status in, in Paris at the moment. Um, we want to have a, an approach of sustainable agriculture at the landscape river, uh, level. Um, what we want is is uh, is to to build up an approach which considers the the plantation as an ecosystem which is surrounded by uh, other crops surrounded by other um, wild species and uh, any strategy, any um, changes in public policies must have a landscape approach. Next slide, please. So what we're gonna do in this salsa platform is uh, to understand why there's deforestation and why it is stopping, if it's really stopping, uh, the territorial dynamics, uh, why people are using phi, uh, why don't they use the biomass the best way? Um, the ecological intensification is something we're doing every day. It's, it's changing the practices in the plantation and around the plantation to reduce the, the impact of pesticides, avoid pollutions, um, recycling the organic matter in the plantations. Um, number three is inclusivity of small orders. We all know the importance, the social, the ecological importance of small orders of education, of grouping in cooperatives, transfer, transferring of innovation to small orders to make their life better and to keep this part of the sector attractive. Because uh, if people are not looking anymore to plantations, we're gonna have a very, very severe um, uh, manpower shortage, which could be maybe more severe than any climate changes in, in the sector. And our job, because training is really part of the DNA of, of CIRAD, we have to prepare the people, the academic, the, uh, the students, but also the young professionals to be ready to change the practices and to embrace a really sustainable uh, approach of uh, old barn production and insert it in the landscape approach. Next slide. Yeah, this is the, 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 the really simple scheme of our, this platform. One more minute. Yep, we want to mix innovation, okay. higher education and research. Yes, next. This is an example of the, a couple of examples of the projects we are, we are delivering at the moment. Trace, it's a project which is developed in, in Sabah, in uh, the Kinabatangan region. It's an uh, agroforestry project, we're gonna uh, reforest some uh, uh, biodiversity corridors, uh, which are going to be mixed with the oil palm. So the idea is to uh, go beyond the, the borders between plantations and forests and provide livelihoods to the people around. Because 
uh, uh, watching the wildlife is okay, but it doesn't provide any income to you. So you have to plant something and, and make your money from that. Next slide. That is the partnership, uh, Melanking Plantations in, in Sabad, in the Kinab Kinabatangan region. UTAN, which is an NGO uh, specialized in the monitoring and conservation of wildlife, Sirad itself, UPM, you know them. And the uh, money comes from the French government through the uh, French embassy in Kuala Lumpur. We got uh, something like uh, 800,000 euros for two years uh, in the beginning of the project. But a few of the topics you're going to the, the work on. Next slide. Not only the, the fresh fish system, this is a plantation design. You're going to mix pure oil plant plantation with agroforestry corridors and full of agroforestry corridors to compare the forest dynamics, uh, the performance on the oil palm, and the impact on the livelihoods on the people around. Next slide. Okay, no, same outputs of the project. Uh, next slide. Another uh, project we are initiating is, uh, is Talent. Talent is a, a training and uh, uh, academic project is to uh, change the, the training uh, platforms for uh, the future managers of plantations. Next slide. Clearly we want to uh, change the vision. We want to, to, to train sustainability managers instead of plantation managers. Next slide. Yeah, the, the, the managers now, uh, they are facing a lot of sustainability issues and they have to be prepared during their uh, training cycle, not only at the uni, but uh, as professional as well. So the question of climate change, we just talked about that, traceability, uh, the communities and the civil society in and outside the plantation and the biodiversity around. That are just a few questions, but there are many uh, topics we're going to address during this uh, four, uh, maybe five years uh, cycle of teaching. The strategy is to update uh, ongoing courses. We don't have time and money to uh, rebuild the house from uh, beginning to end. So we will just insulate, we just put a flavor of sustainability on training courses, which are already, already existing. Next slide. You'll probably know this guy. Uh, and you just want to renew some content uh, in some modules, not reinventing the wheel and not rebuilding master courses from scratch. We don't have time and money for that. Next slide. And with that, I thank you for your kind of, uh, attention and say bye bye. And, and uh, I have to jump into the Office conference now. Uh, I wish you a very fruitful meeting and 